You ever feel like so many stories out there are ripoffs of other stories? Why aren't there more original ideas? I mean, is it even possible as a creative person to come up with something new? The answer is definitively yes. Ideas are a limited resource, like fresh water or petroleum. Ideas are limitless, and I'm going to explain why. Even better, I'm going to tell you how to come up with something original and compelling. Hey y'all, it's your writing coach, John Claw Bemis, here to help you with generating ideas for amazing stories. Today, we're gonna explore lateral leaps. This is a way of using a particular mode of thinking called lateral thinking to come up with something wildly original and new. Do you ever wonder about who Mr. Reese's was? Yeah. Me neither. But look at what he invented. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. The best candy ever. You just take two things. Peanut butter and chocolate. And bam! He made a sensation. His secret? Putting things together in ways that we hadn't seen before. Sure, people ate chocolate and people ate peanut butter. But together? That's how all creative ideas are born. Take old things and put them together in new ways. Take this invention. Some of you might not remember, but back in 2007, Steve Jobs announced the coming of the iPhone. The idea behind the iPhone was take one of those old fashioned phones that was, well, just for calling people, put it in a computer, add a camera, and you've got a smartphone. Back then, I thought it was a stupid idea. I thought, I'll never buy one of those. I was wrong. You, as a writer, want to do something new, interesting, creative, original. Well, here's the secret. Put things together in your story in ways that readers haven't seen before. Take Homer's The Odyssey and set it during the Civil War. That's what my fellow North Carolina writer, Charles Frazier, did with Cold Mountain. What if we took Roman gladiator battles and put them in a future where reality TV determines what government resources communities get? Bang! You've got the Hunger Games. That's what it means to make lateral leaps. You put things together in ways that at first don't seem like they fit, but you as the artist find the connection. I'm a nerd about cognitive science, and there's this scholar, Douglas Hostadter, who has a helpful term for understanding this way of being creative. Hostadter calls this approach jutsing, or jumping out of the system. As writers and readers, we're used to certain systems and stories, genres like fantasy, mystery, and romance, or a system. Character types, like heroes, villains, and love interests are another system. Jutsing is finding a way to play with a system's rules, to subvert reader expectations, to juxtapose story elements in ways we don't normally see. Now, just because you put two unrelated things together doesn't mean that you're going to come up with some brilliant idea. Take this outfit, for instance. But just because your combination of ideas seems weird or dumb at first, doesn't mean it's a bad idea. When I was working on the initial ideas for my debut novel, The Nine Pound Hammer, I wanted it to be this American fantasy epic with monsters and magic, but also cowboys and carnival performers. At first, I worried it might be too weird or just plain dumb. I mean, cowboys and magic? Come on! That sounds like a recipe for disaster. But like the iPhone that seemed dumb at first, I kept working on finding the right connection with these ideas in the Nine Pound Hammer until I got the story to a place that all those pieces fit together elegantly. You've got to play and explore, try and fail and 
try again until it works. Let's test it out. Let me show you how it works, okay? Let's take two things that at first don't seem like they fit together, like an adorable kitten and a tornado. Look at that. Oh, what ideas arise for you? Are they weird and fantastical, a town ravaged by mysterious storms, and our character realizes a tiny innocent kitten has gotten strange powers that are causing disaster? Or something more realistic, an impending tornado and the family is taking shelter, but their beloved kitten is missing and your character risks everything running into the storm to rescue the kitten. Whatever your idea is, it can be captivating. The secret to this way of being creative is forcing your brain to make interesting connections. That opens up creative ideas. Did you do my last class on magnetic nouns? If not, you might want to check out that video. But if you did, that list of magnetic nouns, well, you can put any of them together in unusual and interesting and surprising combinations. That's lateral leaps. So you like murder mysteries. Well, what if you set that in a story about a voyage through outer space? Or if you have this idea for a story where a wealthy relative dies and leaves a very mysterious will. Well, what if you combine that with a story about a samurai in Shogun era Japan? Or if you have that traditional character of the, the mentor or archetype of, of a guide in your story. Well, don't do the traditional thing where we always see that mentor figure as an elderly person. You know, what else could that mentor figure be? Make a lateral leap. In my book, The Wooden Prince, I reimagined the Pinocchio story, but not as Carlo Collati did or Walt Disney. I made all these lateral leaps, these unexpected connections. I'd been fascinated by Da Vinci's designs for flying machines and mechanical knights. I'd also been fascinated by Marco Polo's fabricated accounts of finding dog-headed people on his journey into Asia. What if Marco Polo not only brought silks and spices back to Europe, but also strange creatures and magic? What if that magic allowed da Vinci to make actual flying machines in Renaissance Europe and mechanical soldiers and servants? What if Pinocchio was one of those mechanical servants? What if he was a da Vinci robot? That lateral leap, that combination of unrelated ideas, da Vinci and robots, was the springboard for my novel, The Wooden Prince. It made for exciting storytelling. The ideas just seemed to jump out of those lateral connections. So here's your assignment. Pick two things that fascinate you, two things that don't seem related. Don't just find one way to connect those ideas into a potential story. Find at least six ways to connect those ideas. That's called the rule of six. I'll do another video sometime on the rule of six. But for now, you get the idea. Don't stop at your first idea. Stretch yourself. Keep pushing the limits of ideas and possibilities. Here's one more assignment to try. Pick a character from your book you want to make more interesting. Give him or her or them a phobia that you've never seen a character have before. We've seen plenty of characters afraid of spiders, snakes, the dark, and all that. But what about a character who is phobic about rain or keys or dirt? How will that phobia affect how your character behaves in the story? How will it give you interesting and challenging situations to put your character in. You can do this same sort of exercise, making a lateral leap to make your character interesting and unexpected by trying this with your character's talents or personality, physical appearance, anything. I hope understanding this very specific way of thinking is going to help you to come up with ideas and to connect ideas in your story in ways that readers have never seen before. 
Well, I'm John Claude Bemis. I'm an author and an educator. I'm also a story consultant, workshop presenter, speaker. I get into the schools, work with young people, also work with a lot of adults. So if you or a writer you know would like to find out more about how I can support you, then I hope you'll visit my website, johnclaudebemis.com. You can also find me on Facebook and on Instagram. So go dream the dream that only you could dream and go write the story that only you could possibly write.